All right, so this morning I want to give you an update on what's been happening at Abra, and I have some, uh, I think, exciting announcements to make and some new stuff to show you. So let's get right into it. All right, so those of you who, who um, don't know what Abra is, uh, the reason we started Abra is pretty basic. I wanted for the first time a single application that globally would allow you to send money between any two phone numbers, right? I'm, I'm in Miami, somebody else is in Italy, and I randomly want to send them money, and today, extremely difficult to do that, especially if you're talking about small dollar amounts. Uh, if you're luck lucky enough that both parties are banked, you're not going to send somebody $20 if it costs you $20 to send them the money. So there's lots of scenarios that are simply impossible, uh, realistically impossible via the traditional banking system or other means, and we started Abra to uh, fix this problem. So. You know, there, not only is there this huge market for uh, these small dollar, uh, what I call P2P money transfers that really don't happen for, for mostly reasons uh, due to cost, right? You all know about the size of the remittance markets, uh, but I also think that the uh, cross-border e-commerce market is about to explode, and, and I think Miami's a really interesting place to talk about this because it's becoming a hub for this, uh, especially in the logistics area for, for the rest of the region. Um, we're already, we already see, for example, consumers in Asia who are buying uh, Steam and, and, and Amazon uh, credits and gift cards using Abra uh, because it's the cheapest way to do so and they can get real-time gratification. If they don't have a bank account, they can load their Abra wallet at a, at a store in their neighborhood and go to an online merchant and complete their purchase. And so, so I think that this uh, market in particular is really going to explode. Um, in the next few years. So if you don't have Abra, uh, you, know, you can try it out. It's super easy. It's on the App Store. It's been there for a while. Right now it's live in, uh, for consumers in the US and the Philippines, um, and today we're about to change that. All right, so let's get into it. So I have three big announcements today. As we were going through the user feedback and figuring out how consumers wanted to use Abra, there was a lot of excitement and support, and thank you very much, within this community, uh, the Bitcoin community for Abra, but they were saying, look, you've made it so easy to hide the fact that this is a Bitcoin wallet because you're hedging Bitcoin in US dollars or Philippine pesos. If I want to interact with Abra from my existing Bitcoin wallets, you've completely eliminated that possibility uh, from the system. And so that was by far the, the kind of number one piece of constructive feedback that, that we got from the community. So today I'm happy to announce that the first announcement is, is that we're adding direct Bitcoin support into the Abra app itself. Now, it's obviously a Bitcoin wallet, but what I mean is you'll actually be able to use Bitcoin as a currency and then interoperate with dollars, pesos, and, and uh, maybe soon some, some other currencies uh, by the time we get to the end of the presentation. So, so, so that's, the, that's the first announcement, and I'm going to show you uh, in, a, in a minute how this works. Uh, but basically, what I want here is I want people to be able to load Bitcoin the way you normally would from an external address and immediately send that money to somebody who has no idea what Bitcoin is and maybe thinks they're not interested and, and watch their reaction when they see dollars on their phone and then you tell them, well, I just sent you Bitcoin and you didn't even know it, right? And, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So again, you can load Bitcoin from any wallet, whether you're holding Bitcoin in the Abra app or dollars makes no difference. The money will show up in the app uh, just like any other Bitcoin transfer you may have done in the past and someone can send you fiat uh, you know, via Abra, uh, and you can receive that as Bitcoin or vice versa. If you're holding Bitcoin, you can send them Bitcoin and they can receive fiat. I believe this has never happened in quite this way before. And most importantly, it extends the value of Bitcoin for the layperson who probably wouldn't understand what all of us are talking about right now. And that's super exciting, right? I don't think this has happened before. So let me show you how this works. Now, I've, I've installed a new Abra wallet here, and I've chosen to, to hold Bitcoin. For the purpose of the demo, it doesn't matter whether I chose to hold dollars, pesos, Bitcoin. When I load the Bitcoin from outside, as I'm going to show you, it would load the same way, all right? So I need to add some money, so, right? So what I want to do is, in this case, I'm going to use Bitcoin, meaning I'm going to load money from an external Bitcoin wallet. And this part, most of you have probably seen before. I'm going to copy my public key, no big deal. Then I'm going to leave the app, or I'm going to mail that key to somebody else who may be sending me Bitcoin. And I'll just basically paste that, um, paste that key into my, uh, in this case, blockchain wallet, send myself a bunch of Bitcoin, and press send, voila, and I get a push notification in the Abra app that somebody sent me Bitcoin. Now again, no big deal, you've all seen that before, but this is where now where things start to get really interesting. 
Now I want to send this Bitcoin to somebody who has no idea what Bitcoin is, uh, but I've told, hey, I'm going to send you money, just download Abra. Okay, and it's all going to work. So now I'm going to send this money, and I'm going to send this money to Juan. Now Juan has a dollar uh, wallet. Now when you type in somebody's phone number to, or choose them from your contacts at Abra, the app knows what currency they're expecting to receive, and, and that's important because you get a feel for how the exchange rates work in the app in real time. So it's showing me that if I send him this money right now, he's going to receive $100, and he won't even see Bitcoin when he receives the money. So I, I, I type in the amount, I send the money. Juan has now received uh, $100, okay? There's Juan's um, Abra app. Now Juan is going to then further send this money to somebody in his address book. Um, we're gonna choose Maria, and Maria's in Mexico, and she's expecting to receive pesos, right? So we're gonna send, um, how much are we gonna send? We're gonna send her $100, which is equivalent in this demo to 2,000 pesos. We send her the money, and the money is sent. Now, Maria is going to need to get those pesos off of her phone, right? And there's a couple of ways to do that. We're gonna come back to that in a second, right? So let's not forget about Maria, we'll come back to her. Now this leads first to the second announcement that I wanna to make today. You all, hopefully by now, um, if not, I'll remind you that there's two ways right now well, now there's three with Bitcoin, but before there was two ways to interact with the Abra app to get money on and off. The first was using your bank account if you're in the US, and the second was this concept of the Abra Teller, which we've been testing uh, in Asia for a few months. Uh, we've got a few thousand tellers, for example, live in the Philippines, processing transactions every day. It's a really cool model. Um, so the second announcement is, is that Abra Tellers can now hold Bitcoin completely transparent to the consumers. Now, why would you want to do this? Let's think about this for a second, okay? If you're a Bitcoin trader, right? Uh, how many of you here are, are Bitcoin traders? All right, right on. How, how big is the audience that you can trade with today? Well, if they know Bitcoin, right? So your audience is basically the universe of people that are interested in trading in Bitcoin. Now, there's seven billion people on the planet, and I would posit that that number, unfortunately, on a percentage basis, is still pretty small. What this does is it allows you as the trader, now for the first time, to effectively trade with anybody on the planet who doesn't even know that you're trading with them in Bitcoin. Because if Maria needs to get those 2,000 pesos off of her phone, and you're using a Bitcoin wallet to do it, you can now trade with her effectively in Bitcoin, right? And she doesn't even know that you just traded with her in Bitcoin, and I'm gonna show you how that works in a second. All right. So this means that not only that the consumer doesn't know what the teller is holding, but we went one step further. Let's say that you were a Bitcoin-based teller in Argentina. Now, we all know what's happening in Argentina. It's not fun. Um, and I, I would guess that when people see what we're doing today, and I get to the third announcement, that people are mostly going to want to hold um, digital dollars in Argentina, but every once in a while get paper pesos out of their accounts. So, as I said, we took this one step further and created this concept of a two-step uh, two real-time foreign exchange transaction. So what that means is I can hold any currency in my Abra wallet as a consumer. Dollars, euros, pesos, makes no difference. I can meet a teller, and unbeknownst to me, that teller is holding Bitcoin in their Abra app, but that teller processes a peso withdrawal for me, doesn't even know that I was holding dollars on my phone. And Abra works out all the mechanics for the foreign exchange, the fee reconciliation in real time so that the consumer walks away with pesos, the teller has the increased amount of Bitcoin on their phone, or vice versa if the person wants to make a deposit, meaning that they can take the cash in one currency and pay out to the phone uh, in another currency. And again, um, neither parties are the wiser for what each person was holding on their phone. Okay, so let's go back um, to Maria and let's process her uh, withdrawal on her phone. Now, I'm gonna sign up as an Abra teller, and I did a, a fresh install on my phone. I've chosen uh, as a Bitcoin trader to become an Abra teller. I have no money on my phone yet, right? But I'm going to process a withdrawal for Maria, which is going to cause Bitcoin to be put on my phone because I'm gonna take th the pesos off of her phone and hand her, in this case, paper pesos, but again, I can choose a different currency if I wanted to. So, for Maria here, I'm gonna process a withdrawal. And the first thing I do is I ask her to start up her Abra app, and if you've never seen it, you just hold the, 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 um, the teller's uh, uh, phone over the consumer's phone, and it automatically recognizes their phone, syncs the phone so that there's no typing mistakes, uh, and, and, and automatically tells me that I'm transacting with uh, Maria. In this case, uh, I type in the amount 
uh, then I'm going to withdraw 2,000. Uh, the, the app deals with the fees. The teller sets their own fees. So, you know, if you're in, a, uh, in an area where there's not a lot of liquidity yet, the fees may be higher. If you're in a city with more competition, you know, the fees may be lower. But we want the network to set their own fees. Uh, Maria gets a push notification standing right in front of you to agree to the transaction, which causes her phone to do a publish of the, um, of the money that she wants off of her phone to the blockchain uh, so that the teller can hand the cash to her. And then when she confirms that, I know that I hand her 1960 pesos, which is the 2000 minus the fees. And I can click and see the reconciliation of how we did this calculation and then furthermore see how much is going to be on my phone as the teller, which in this case is 1,980 pesos, which is the 2,000 minus Abra's fee. So, so it all works out very, very neatly. And then I have my, my Bitcoin on my phone because when, she hand, when her phone pushed me her digital pesos, it was converted to raw Bitcoin on my phone, even though I handed her paper pesos for the withdrawal, like an ATM machine. Does that make sense? All right. So, so what you've just seen effectively is a real-time foreign exchange conversion where the payout currency could have been any currency that I chose that would be supported in the Abra app. Okay. So how did I actually become a teller in the first place? And this is part of this, um, this, this uh, second phase launch we're doing where we've created a whole new teller dashboard and onboarding process, which I'm going to show you. So, so you notice here there's three buttons. Uh, normally, when you're a teller, there's a fourth button at the bottom, which is teller, which I'm going to show you how I got that on the screen. I'm going to press the, the menu button on the upper left, and I'm going to choose become an Abra teller, which anybody can do. The, and, and, and the onboarding process, basically, we need to know a few things about you. We need to know where you are, and, uh, and, and so that when a person is using the app, they know if there's a teller uh, in their neighborhood and what your fees are, et cetera, et cetera. So here I'm going to uh, set my location. I could go place a pin on a map and confirm the location, or I could uh, you know, scroll around and choose a different location, or if I want to basically have a, a fixed location that is a public place, I can, I can type it in and set my address to be like, for example, let's say I want to do my trades at a, as a teller at a Starbucks. I can put that in the map. Whatever location I choose, I can also change it later. I can change it all day long if I'm moving around or if, I'm, if I have a convenience store or something like that. Obviously, it's not going to change much. Okay, so now I'm all set. So if I, as a trader, don't want to be available during certain hours, I can set the hours or I can make myself unavailable by clicking the little toggle at the, um, the top of the app. Now, this is really interesting. This is the dashboard once I'm all set. If I scroll down here, you see that there's this transaction currency. Right, obviously, oh, there's the fees as well, and I can change those fees. This transaction currency is really interesting. This is different from the wallet currency. This is what enables the consumer to have one currency and the payout to be in a different currency. Because if I choose transaction currency, I can now choose right, any currency supported in the system that does the FX calculation, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute how many of them there are. Um, so this is really cool. I, I've never seen this before. So. Uh, I can't wait for people to, uh, to try this out. Um, and the other thing is, is that you know, when, you're, when you're getting into the fees, it kind of guides you a little bit. Uh, we're adding some stuff to figure out where you are and what the liquidity is in your neighborhood. So you know, maybe the fees need to be a little higher to support your business. And, and, and those of you who use things like local Bitcoin know what I'm talking about. So now you see that I'm registered as an Abra teller, and I'm good to go. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So, so we talked about Bitcoin support for a consumer. Uh, we talked about uh, Bitcoin support for tellers and for traders. When is all this stuff going to be available? And so this is the third announcement. So Abra is going global in February uh, with 50 currencies initially, uh, but usable in any country in the world, uh, minus the, the sanctioned countries, of course, uh, and will support individual tellers globally at that time. This is what we've been working towards for uh, two years, and uh, with a lot of people and a lot of sweat. And I'm super excited that uh, today we're announcing for the first time that we're finally going to be able to flip the switch on this. All right. Right on. Thank you. Uh, so, so let me show you how, how, what this means for the, the currency support. So I'm going to go back into the menu here. I'm going to change the currency. Now, uh, here uh, it tells me that Abra is available in so many currencies. And I can scroll through. I can choose Bitcoin as a currency. Now, when you actually change currencies in the Abra app, it's not just a convenience balance. It literally republishes your balance to the blockchain and then sends you the money. And that's necessary because of the way our hedging system works. 
Um, so just to, to, to you know, further make the point that this isn't just a convenience balance. Right? And it shows you, uh, as you're doing that currency conversion, uh, what that's going to mean uh, for your balance. Right? Um, so I'm going to back out of that. So we want people to, well, there's a couple of things. We're, the biggest reason why we're announcing this now is that now that we're clear on, on, on taking this global, uh, in February, we need more lead time to get as many individual tellers around the world uh, live and, and, and ready to go in the system as quickly as possible. So we're really going to uh, be making, making a big community push within the, the trading community, within uh, you know, the retail community, uh, for all of you to help and support us to get as many tellers live as we can as quickly as possible. So download the app. You can register today. Um, if you turn the slides back on, there you go. Uh, you will get to the front of the line. Just ping me on Twitter and mention to me that you're, uh, send me a DM or, or whatever, and just mention, hey, I'm a trader. Uh, put me to the front of the line. Promise you'll get to the front of the line. Um, we are going to do things differently in the US. Uh, people outside the US, uh, once they've provided the information, we're going to get to the point over the first several weeks where they're onboarded pretty much in real time in the US because of FinCEN policies. Uh, we're going to basically make sure that you're aware that you may have obligations for that and that it's your responsibility. And those of you who are already trading know what I'm talking about. Uh, and if you don't, you can you know, go to local Bitcoin forums and see how all that stuff works. All right, so please, 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 please register as quickly as possible. And more importantly, tell all your friends to do the same. So just to summarize, right, so we've added Bitcoin support. Um, this is transparent to users. The litmus test for me is going to be when all of you get your moms and dads to download Abra and you send them Bitcoin and they see dollars on their phone, withdraw it to their Bank America, Bank America account, and you tell them two weeks later that you actually sent them Bitcoin and they didn't know it. That's what I want to hear, right? When, once we've accomplished that, I'll know that we've made this useful for everyone on the planet. And I believe that's what's achievable here now with, with this announcement. All right, and so uh, this is the part that, uh, that we were working super hard on that's really complex, but this is the support uh, for Bitcoin traders, which we just talked about, and then lastly, going live in February. So that's it. So we'll, we have a bunch of people here from the ABRA team. We'll be around the next day or so. So come find us and ask us questions, and we can show you some more demos. But um, thanks for your support. And I think that probably the, one of the, the, the biggest takeaways for me is two things, right? So, so we have a set of core values that we talk about, and actually next week when I go back to to, to the Bay Area, we're actually having an offsite just on this. Uh, we do this for product, but we even do it for values. And this is the one, the, the, the core value of the company that really drives everything at the company. And that's the belief in the individual's right to conduct all forms of commerce freely and, and unencumbered. And, and so um, as part of that, I think that this is like a second coming out for us because of the kind of overt Bitcoin support. And you know, I've told the company that it's really important to me that we become really positive and um, you know, beneficial stewards of the Bitcoin community as part of what we're doing here. And so that's an extension of this, uh, this value to me. And so, so I'm really excited that we're going to be more open about our support for the community going forward. Anyway, thank you very much for the time and um, yeah, for your support forever.